Avast ye hardies, uh, witness my ill-fitting tricorn cap. Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to Citanium Mine. And you might be wondering why I'm wearing this hat. Well, it's actually because I need to talk about a couple games. This is going to keep annoying me. Uh, I need to talk about a couple games that are about pirates on the high seas. Uh, yeah, that's the theme we're going with today. And uh, we're going to be talking about Skull and Bones and Sail Forth. Now, Skull and Bones is a game that recently released, and I got a chance to play it for an extended period of time when it was on Free Play Weekend right before it launched. It is a game that we thought would never really release, as it seems like it was in development hell over at Ubisoft for a very long time, and when you see the opening credits to the game, you realize that uh, there might be a reason for it. There's about 20 different Ubisoft studios that worked on this thing, uh, like they were playing Hot Potato or something like that. But hey, you know what? At least we have a game. So there's that. The idea behind Skull and Bones is basically... Uh, okay, well, you remember Assassin's Creed Black Flag, right? great game. You got to play a pirate, right? Edward Kenway. And, and you were, like, on a ship, and, and you'd board the ships, and you'd, you'd fight other, like, pirates, and you met, like, Blackbeard and uh, Hornigold and all of these characters. That's pretty great. Well, one of the things that people really loved about that was the ship combat, going and exploring the open waters, the high seas of the Caribbean. That's pretty cool, right? Well, Ubisoft got an idea in their head that they could build a game around that. And that was supposed to be Skull and Bones. This is not new for Ubisoft. They will often take an idea that they saw from a previous series and flesh it out as their own thing. In fact, Assassin's Creed as a series was inspired by their work on Prince of Persia where they realized that all of the acrobatics and the parkour were really neat, especially like the combat mechanics and everything, but wouldn't it be cool if we put it into an open world setting? That wouldn't really be a Prince of Persia game anymore, though, so they created Assassin's Creed as a new series. So I kind of figured that Skull and Bones was going to be doing something like that, but taking the seafaring ship combat of Black Flag and applying it to a new game. That's why they started a new series for it. And yeah, we really didn't know if this was ever going to come out. And it was overhyped when they announced they were really, truly doing it, you guys, by having it called a, um, what was it, quadruple A game? Yeah, I think you guys might have set your sights a little too high there. <laughs> the idea behind Skull and Bones is that your ship gets destroyed. And you end up on this, like, little raft, and you basically have to go through a pirate story where you get bigger and better ships on the open seas by collecting a bunch of resources and accomplishing a lot of missions and getting more blueprints so that you can upgrade your armor and your cannons and, you know, build bigger and better ships that all have, like, special qualities to them in sort of this big open-world sea that's in front of you. Now, I have seen some complaints about this game that I think are warranted and some that are not. The one that I think is a little iffy is when people are complaining about things that the game does not have in it that were not really expected to be in the game at all. Like, for instance, I can vouch for the fact that there really isn't any, like, on-ground combat. There's no ship-to-ship -ship combat where you swing over like you did in Black Flag and start attacking people, or even personally man the uh, grappling hooks so that you can get onto the opposite ship. You don't do that in this game. You don't have those places where you swim. You can't swim in this game. Uh, there really isn't any, like, land-based stuff. You kind of just walk around some hub areas there. Uh, you don't jump around on buildings, because again, this isn't Assassin's Creed. <laughs> this is a different series altogether, probably the reason why they wanted to do a different series, because they knew that those were not going to be components. This was specifically going to focus on the ship-based combat. I understand why some people might want those elements in the game. Totally get that. But 
they're not in there and the team didn't make the illusion that it was going to. At least if they did, I wasn't aware of it. The idea was that it was going to be an open world ship game. So I want to judge it on that, how well it did that. And I didn't hate it. Understand that. I did not hate the game. I actually kind of liked the game. I would have actually liked to play it more than that weekend because I found it very fun to go around these open seas. Something that really strikes me about Ubisoft, if they do anything right, is I really like their environmental design. The overall world that you get into looks great. Like, the, the ocean looks really nice, the land looks really nice, the elements that they put in there look nice. There were times where I would just, like, be up in the crow's nest and you could just kind of, like, look out over the sea, You'd be able to pull back from your ship and just look, and, and it, it's just, it's lovely. It's just these beautiful, like, portraits of an open world. The combat is very rudimentary. If I turn my camera to the side of my ship, the cannons will go to the side ship cannons, and if I aim and the cannons are somewhere in that cone, they fire. I can, I can hit the trigger and make them fire at the opposing ship. Uh, I might want to raise them up or down, but they're going to try to hit the ship that is right next to you. Uh, and if I go toward the front, and I have front-facing cannons or back-facing cannons, same thing. Uh, if at some point you weaken your ship enough and you get up close, you might get a contact button that says, would you like to try to grapple this? And then you can hit the button and see if you can launch your three grappling hooks onto the opposite ship, at which point you get a quick animation and you find out like all the loot that you've taken from the ship. Otherwise, it will sink and you will just try to collect it afterward. Uh, but you won't get as much because you weren't able to board the ship. There is no on-ship combat or anything like that. Again, this really isn't focusing on you as a captain. That's all pretty much just cosmetic. This is focusing on the ship. The ship is really the mechanical part of this. There's also resource collection in the game. Resource collection, you go up to a shoreline where there are resources, and you engage with a little mini-game where you have to time your button presses, while you're on the ship. Again, there's really not a lot to do when you are on foot. It's pretty much walking around, doing a little bit of crafting, getting some quests, talking to some NPCs. It's just management stuff. There's no combat, there's not really any exploration, not that kind of game. Even though I would say that it might not be fair to judge it on the things that it doesn't do, I understand that it would have been cool if those things were in the game. It would have been cool if you really had an open-world pirate game in similar fashion to the more modern Assassin's Creed games, right? Where you did have, like, a fully explorable ocean and wrecks that you could explore. I wouldn't like it because I'd have to deal with sharks. But the point of the matter is, is that I can understand why people might want that. Be able to explore all these islands all across the Caribbean. That would be cool. But that would make it an Assassin's Creed game, not its own series. And I think that's the key here. They wanted to break off and do a different series, which means that they have to focus on something else. If you are, however, going to focus on that, do it really well. And unfortunately, I don't really think that Skull and Bones does it very well. The upgrade system is like a, a color-coded tier system for your cannons and everything like that, and you can craft them and craft better versions of different kinds of cannons, and you basically have one slot to put them into for the sides, for the front, and for the back, depending on what version of the ship you get. Uh, different ships will have different layouts, but that's basically all you're ever going to see. You're going to have one slot for each. I can't mix and match cannons for the side, which would have been really cool. Uh, there's just not a ton of variety in it. A lot of your upgrades to the ship are specifically cosmetic. There are a few minor buffs that you can get by putting unique equipment on your ship, and each ship has certain slots for it. Uh, there are some upgrades that you can get for the ships to make them a little hardier, you know, put some armor on them. But 
it is fairly minimal. I mean, considering that the game essentially began development back in 2013, like, as an expansion to Black Flag, you you kind of get surprised that there wasn't a clear vision that could have been fleshed out more. If you're going to be focusing on the naval combat, well, one, the naval combat should be rich and engaging and have lots of customizable elements to it. Also, there should be a lot of interesting stuff to do there. I should be able to really customize my ship. I, I should be able to, like, hire my crew. These are ideas that have been done in other games, I can't do that here. It feels very bare bones. Bare skull and bones, for that matter. And that is unfortunate. With all the studios that worked on this, and the, like, decade of development time to try and get this together, this is it? Like, it's engaging enough. There's fun to be had. The exploring of this ocean is fun. It's just very basic, rudimentary even. And that's disappointing. I'm fine with a game that wants to focus in on a specific thing. If you want to do naval combat and only do naval combat, good on you. That exists in a very unique space that is different than a lot of open-world games. But if you're going to do that, it's got to be really rich in what you're presenting to players. Skull and Bones really isn't. When it even gets to the storyline, it feels very lackluster, phoned in a lot of the time. The vocal performances, the characters, I don't remember any of their names... It feels a lot like a downgrade from what Black Flag was. Even if you're just taking into account the story and the ship combat. I think the thing that's most unfortunate about Skull and Bones, though, is that it really does look nice. Like, immediately you realize that the game looks real good, sounds real nice, you know? A lot of elements that make you feel like this really is a top-tier game, but it's lacking in the substance underneath. And there is where the problem really lies. So, what if you had an open-world naval game that focused on exploration and had more customizable ship-based combat? Well... We have another game that we're going to talk about. Because after I played Skull and Bones, I was reminded about another game that I hadn't picked up since I tried, like, the Next Fest demo a long time ago. And that is Sail Forth. Sail Forth, especially compared to Skull and Bones, is a very indie project. It's a small development house, Festive Vector. And what they create is a stylized, almost Wind Waker kind of style game, as was cited at the time, that has a lot of cartoony personality to it, but focuses on you getting yourself a ship and then starting to outfit it and sailing the open seas, discovering new islands and places and people, and it is very colorful and simple. You meet some, you know, underwater folks, you uh, deal with giant monsters, ice monsters, at some point, and you actually do have the ability to learn how to craft or pick up from naval combat different and better versions of your cannons, and then get the ability to, as you get bigger and better ships, have more upgrade slots on the sides of your ships, and even the front and back, so that you can outfit specific cannons into each one of those slots. Sailforth does a really nice job of making the sailing engaging. For instance, you have several levels of your ship sails going up, which is something that you saw in Skull and Bones too, but I, I'm just interested that they did this on a smaller indie project and it was in 22 
But they have that, but then they also have wind direction. And you can see where the wind direction is coming from. And you have a little meter at the bottom, which will show you red zones and green zones. And what you can do is actually move and rotate your sail to try to keep it in the pocket of the green zone where you're going to catch the wind. So it keeps you actively engaged, not just with trying to move your boat around, but also trying to keep your sail in a sweet spot so that you can really go forward as fast as you possibly can. In addition to that, you'll take on pirate ships and pirate outposts and the aforementioned monsters in the sea. And you will also get the ability to do some photo time. Yes, this, like every other game, has a photo mode. The thing about it is that the camera mode in this is actually utilized for things. You will come across all of these sea creatures, your sharks, and your dolphins, and your stingrays, and you will be able to photograph them, and then get your photos judged at a station, as well as do some fishing. You just drop your line off the edge, you do a little quick mini-game, you collect different fish for your collection. You might even dredge up some ancient artifacts, which you can then sell to the dudes at the lighthouses, who will give you special upgrade tokens, essentially. Um, luminade, as they call it in this game. And you take your little luminade pieces to your inventor person, who will teach you new recipes that you're going to be able to craft, by which he means you're going to be able to buy them at the shop. And you find new cannons, some that fire really slow, some that fire really fast, but don't do very much damage, some that fire really long range, some that do specifically fire damage. You can have arbalests on the front, like I like, because they're really far range, but then you can keep your heavier cannons, and a good wide range of them, some that fire really fast, some that are slow and do heavy damage, on the sides. Maybe keep a swivel cannon or something on the back if you want to have nice range. The point of the matter is, is that it does a really nice job of letting you customize how your ship is put together. Every one of the ships also has some upgrade slots so you can decide whether you want to use it for armor or if you want to use it to get more sail dimension, which will make it easier to sail, or if you want to put a battering ram on the front of your ship so that you can just boom right into them. You get a little bit of customization, and what's kind of nice is that it's not just upgrading every individual part. You really have to decide what you think is most important. Also really interesting, and something that Skull and Bones didn't do, is that you can have yourself a little fleet. You can have up to three other ships that you can also outfit that will be with you on your travails. So you go and have to deal with a little pirate fleet while your other ships are there, and they'll attack the other enemy ships as well. So you get a nice big naval battle out of the whole thing. And you also get to choose your crew, not just who is the captain, but you get to assign all of the crew for the ship. And every one of them has different passive bonuses, maybe to damage, maybe to repair, but every single one of them is integral to how effective your ship is running. This is a really good way to do ship-based combat, because there's a lot of active elements, and it even keeps essentially the human element, although everybody is blue in this game. The, the point of the matter is, it does keep a certain intimacy with your ships in play. It is not without its faults. Uh, you keep running into and onto elements of the game because the ocean will sway up and down. So you'll be going close to a shoreline and your boat will be up and then it sinks back down and you realize you're on a rock. And the, uh, the difficulty of trying to get yourself off of those rocks can just be a hassle a lot of the time. That is something that I was okay with in Skull and Bones. It didn't seem like I got stuck on land very often. I think that they kind of built it that way so that you didn't. But in Sail Forth, man, you can just you can just beat yourself on shore pretty easy. And then after a certain period of time, it will just reset you in the ocean again. You uh, get to kind of go off in different directions and discover things or find map pieces in Sail Forth, which will lead you to other areas, and you get fast travel ability pretty much at any time so that you can go to those places. There are different challenges that you can go to. Some are races, some are uh, target challenges. You have to hit so many targets, you know, in, in a time 
And there's just a lot of activities. Also worth noting is that there's just a lot of sea. In fact, it's mostly the ocean. There are just land masses and ruins around, but most of what you're doing is just being on the sea. And that's good. I like that. It's fun. It's not particularly heady. It's not particularly deep. But what it is, is customizable and fun and engaging. I would say probably as engaging as Skull and Bones overall, but I did like a lot of the elements that Sailforth had instead, with really the customizable elements of the ship. What's even better is that you might already have Sailforth. It has been a free game of the week on Epic a couple times, but even if you wanted to pay for it, Skull and Bones, the quadruple A game that we're comparing it to, is $70. Sale Forth is typically $20, and it's on sale, actually, at the time that I'm recording this, and does go on sale frequently for even less. So, in terms of value, you might find it a far better one. I have fun with it. Uh, it is a, you know, a little wackier because of how the uh, water physics work in the game. But I didn't mind that. And uh, once you get into the, like, the large ships and it feels like you really have like a man of war at your disposal, uh, it, can, it can be super fun. So I guess what I'm uh, trying to say is uh, if I was giving an alternative recommendation uh, to, to Skull and Bones, I guess I'd, I'd say sail forth. That was easier than I thought this week. This hat doesn't fit me. <laughs> it's amazing. All right. Thank you for joining you on this episode of the Titanium Mine. I can't keep this voice up for long, so I'm gonna go below decks and see if I can find some grog for you before you go on your merry way. Well, that didn't take long. Viewer Overboard! Overboard!